So he's like, well, we need to commandeer your car. Press cars are great because you get a free car for a week. The OEMs, you, you build a nice rapport with them and a good relationship back and forth and you get more cars from them, which is cool. So we did that. I reached out to Toyota. I believe their PR agency was Jackson Spaulding at the time. And uh, they said, hey, we have a Scion FRS for you. And I was like, oh wow, two door sports cars, our first press car, this is great. Super exciting. So we did that and then uh, that's how I met uh, Tavarish. That's how I met Freddie. We, we drove the car together and um, we had a blast and we became fast friends. And after that, we, we just tried to get more and more press cars. So one of the best relationships we have is with Toyota and Lexus. Now we see them at all of the International Motor Press Association events. It's just a, it sounds a lot fancier than it is. It's a very small motor press association up in New Jersey in the Northeast. And we go to a couple of their events. It's good for us because we're small and you know we don't have a ton of access to things. So they bring out a ton of cars at a couple of events throughout the year and we can test drive a whole bunch of things. And we still get press cars, but it's not in the same echelon as Road and Track and Car and Driver and Doug DeMuro. They, they get press cars all the time and uh, have a ton of great relationships. So. I got a uh, Toyota RAV4 from Toyota last summer, it was the V6, and uh, they invited me to go to Maine to go to Team O'Neill Rally School, and I was like, wow, that's cool, I own a Subaru WRX, I've always loved rally, and I thought it was a really interesting kind of experience to have, so I said, yeah, let's do this, and I took the, took the RAV4 and I drove up and a lot of other people that were showing up were driving up in other RAV4s and the RAV4 was the focus of the whole kind of trip, which was kind of interesting. Like, well, you know, this is an outgoing car. It's the last year, model year before they unveiled a new one when now it's 2018, they have a new one out. What, would they, what could they possibly do? It turns out that they actually run a RAV4 in a rally in uh, Rally North America and there's different classes to Rally North America and you know you get your Travis Pastranas and David Higgins and your Subarus with your four-wheel drive and there's a couple of people in that class which is the really high-end class but there's a couple more different there's some really you know low-end stuff people kind of just bring Subaru brats if they want to and just run through the forest which is super cool to see and you get a lot of really interesting fans that are super passionate about rally you know down in like the lower levels toyota ran a rav4 two-wheel drive front wheel drive car that was literally bone stock except for the roll cage and all the prerequisite rally spec stuff you know different suspension the engine is exactly the same from my press car to their rally car so i thought that was kind of kind of a neat thing they had this whole thing planned for us. We went to uh, Team O'Neill Rally School and that was great. I learned how to do uh, the pendulum turn. I learned how to do slides. They were coming out with our RAV4 uh, adventure model. So that was kind of what this whole thing was about. And uh, there's people from Automobile Magazine there and Roadkill and I'm like, well, how, how did I get invited to this? I am a nobody. So I was really kind of honored to be there. After we did Team O'Neill Rally School, we went to another location. There's a ton of different ski areas in Maine. The rally itself was being held at Sunday River. That was the base camp for the rally, which was cool. And I got to see how passionate rally fans are, how approachable all rally drivers are and rally teams are. Travis Pastrana and David Higgins were just literally in the parking lot at Sunday River, basically just talking with people and signing autographs. And like, I walked up to Travis Pastrana and just talked to him for 10 minutes. Like, what, what other racing at like, event would you ever be able to do that in other than maybe a NASCAR backstage pass and even then you can't really talk to the drivers or anything. Ryan Millen of you know uh, Reese Millen and the Millen family you know very famous rally family. Uh, Ryan Millen was the driver for the Toyota RAV4 and they had a perfect season going so they had press ride-alongs in their rally car which is you know is always super fun. They built this little track with with, with Team O'Neill that was part of the whole spiel and they're, they're ripping through the forest. It wasn't very long, but they're, he's cruising. You know, he's a rally driver, he's gonna, and I'm like, dude, scare me. Because I, when I go on press ride-alongs like that, I'm just like, all right, let's see how far they wanna push with a press person in there. So I'm like, dude, just scare me. He's like, all right, and he just mashes the pedal and just goes flying through this thing, and he did it with everybody. But lo and behold, at the end of the day, he pulls back into the tent, and there's definitely something hanging off the bottom of the car. And everyone that had, brought the team you know up there including the team themselves were going uh-oh so they're looking under the car they're ripping stuff apart and they go okay press drives are done so none of us know what's going on we're just sitting there okay fine whatever took a couple more pictures with uh, ryan millen and his co-driver and then kind of went 
went our separate ways to the hotel. It was at Hotel Jordan up at Sunday River. And as I'm pulling in, I see one of the guys, one of the rally team supporters, basically like flag me down and says, hey, um, do you mind getting everything out of your car? And I said, yeah, is there, is there a problem? Like, did I do something wrong during the drive? Was, you know, am I getting kicked out? Like, what's going on here? Do I not have a place to stay tonight? I have no idea what's going on. So he's like, well, we need to commandeer your car. And I go, okay, so Toyota needs my car back. Fine, it's Toyota's car. I'd, who am I to say no to Toyota? It's their own car, it's not mine. Please have your car back. So I go into the hotel, I sleep through the night. I find out that the team had been up to five in the morning that night. We got up at eight. So they got maybe one and a half hours sleep, including Ryan, I think, because he was out there with them trying to figure out what's going on with the car. Turns out what we knocked out from under the car was the entire ECU unit from the rally car. Wouldn't start, wouldn't, nothing would happen. So they took my press car, they ripped out the ECU and basically took my press car apart to put everything back together in the rally car, which is interesting because the press car was an all wheel drive car. The rally car is a front wheel drive car. So what they had to do was some very interesting wiring and clipping of wires that they took one from the other and basically turned an all wheel drive ECU into a front wheel drive ECU ran the race and won the race and kept the perfect season going. But they basically commandeered my car, they <laughs> ripped out the ECU, they tore it apart, and I drove back in a completely different RAV4. And that's how my press car saved their perfect season and saved the season. So I'm the, I'm the savior of the 2017 Toyota RAV4 perfect season. So you guys are welcome. It was really kind of eye-opening to see how cool Rally is. And there's, there's two things that were really cool about that trip. One was the story, because the guy that basically said, I need your car, was, has been in rally for about 35 years. And he's like, that's a real rally story. Because you hear about all these like crazy rally stories, people flipping cars back over, you know, helping out people, but no one really gets to say that, you know, part of what you brought did something for a rally team. So that was neat. The other thing was just to see how passionate rally fans and teams are, but also that it's the third most popular sport in the world, actually, from a audience standpoint. It's soccer, Formula One, and rally. Not a lot of people know that. And I was, and I was kind of floored by that. I had no idea. I thought it would be either a NASCAR or a football or, or some other, you know, global sport or like, I mean, basketball. Basketball is huge all over the globe. No, it's rally. I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm about to go try it out on the Porsche and I'll let you guys know how it goes.